one in solidarity and fraternity. Consecrated to God. Na wate ule awa, upende kuwa bariki, na kuwa takasa. They are given to their brothers and sisters to bring the light of Christ wherever the shadows are darkest, to spread his hope to discouraged hearts. Missions of Hope is a program that highlights the services rendered by religious men and women in their efforts to render services in imitation of Jesus, their master. Missions of Hope, we inspire, transform, and give hope. Missions of Hope, with me, Sister Esther Moturi. We are going to highlight different apostolates and missions that are carried out by different religious men and women. This is Captain TV, your Catholic identity, and today we are privileged to be the studio, the Captain Studios is outside. We are at the monastery, and we are privileged to have yet another a group of powerful women who are carrying out different missions, and I'm going to welcome them to our program today. Be with us as we go on with this conversation. Sisters, welcome to the studio. Thank you. And I would wish, Sister, you start with us with a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, in Jesus' name, for the gift of life, the gift of this day, for creating us for yourself. Thank you for many opportunities you give us in life to make you loved and known throughout the world. We ask you to give us your Holy Spirit that our sharing this day may be for the greater glory of your name, for the growth of your church, and for the good of all your people. We pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, sister. And uh, now I take this opportunity to welcome you to introduce yourselves, your names, and introduce officially <laughs> the official name of your congregation, and in this case, for this monastery. Welcome, sister. Thank you, sister, for the warm welcome. And I also take this opportunity first to welcome you very much. Thank you so much. To the Dominican Nuns Corpus Christi Monastery. Mm -hmm. My name is um, Sister Mary Martin Kawira. I am a finally professed and jubilarian this year. Congratulations, Sister. Sister Martin, dear viewer. Sister, what is your name? Yeah. I am Sister Lucia Warugi Gaba, a solemnly professed, very far from being a jubilarian, but <laughs> still on the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, sisters, for your... Uh, allow me to use the word sisters. I'm so used to sisters. But dear viewer, they are nuns. They stay in a monastery inside. <laughs> so we are going to know more about them, what they carry out, how they do it, but before we go to that, sisters, I would start with Sister Martin. Could you tell our viewer about the Dominican nuns? Who is the founder of this congregation? Thank you, Sister. The founder of this congregation is St. Dominic himself. Mm -hmm. In 1206, he gathered some nuns, convert nuns, convert women, whom we felt that 
in his preaching mission in Indambakap. Mm -hmm. So initially our order started with the nuns mm -hmm. whom we were founded on in 1206 and later on the flyers came <coughs> into being. Okay. Yes. So Dominic was alone, he had not started a, a congregation? No, no, he, he was started... alone. Okay. Yes, okay. he was alone. Mm -hmm. He was working with Bishop Diego, mm -hmm. and in their journeys to and fro, Carcasson, mm -hmm. Toulouse, Fanzo, mm -hmm. they encountered the Abingentiums, mm -hmm. whereby they felt that they are getting errors from preaching. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to bring them to the light by teaching them the truth. Okay. So in that case, when he encountered these women and being led astray mm -hmm. by the wrong doctrine, is when he felt he wanted to bring this, these women to the right. Mm -hmm. And in that case, he decided to explain to them the truth. Okay. And that is where he started after getting them together, he put them in a monastery mm -hmm. in France okay. so that they can be interceding for him while he is in the mission. Okay. Yes, that's how it went on. Thank you, sister. Yeah. Is Dominic from France or Italy? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Saint Dominic yeah. is from Spain. Spain. Yeah. Okay. But okay. the foundations officially started in France. Okay. As what sister mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. they were going for a mission which they were sent by the king mm -hmm. to arrange for the marriage. Okay. But when they were passing through France, they realized there was a lot of heresy, mm -hmm. which was called the Cathars. Mm -hmm. Cathars was preaching about dualism, having two gods. Because the world is too evil, and God is too good, how can you justify this? Okay. The teaching was there must be two gods, a God who created good things and yeah. a God who created bad things. Oh. When Dominic heard that, they stopped mm -hmm. and he started preaching slowly by one person to an innkeeper, mm -hmm. a hotel mm -hmm. keeper, whom he converted by the morning. Diego, the man who was a, the, the man who was a bishop, mm -hmm. who Dominic was accompanying, was a bishop. Mm -hmm. So he had to go back. Mm -hmm. But he was going back with the hope of coming back and to continue the mission of converting by preaching the truth. Mm -hmm. But he died. So Dominic was left alone, as what sister have said, started the preaching with the first women who are the convert and they could not be accepted in the society because now they are not going according to the social standards mm -hmm. of those years. Yeah. So they sought refuge with the Saint Dominic and they became the first nuns. Okay. So Dominic was a Spaniard, but the order started in France. Thank you very much, Sister. Okay. Sister Martin, there is someone who is watching and he or she is wondering, why am I this side and you people are that side? Because basically what we do in the studio, we are in the same room. Could you be able to differentiate? Because I am Sister Esther, you are nuns. Could you tell the difference between the two of us for the sake of the viewer of the Caption TV? Thank you, Sister Esther. Yeah. The difference is there is a difference between a nun and a sister. Yeah. A nun whom we are lives in a monastery in an enclosure. Yeah. And in the enclosure, we have different kind of enclosures. Mm -hmm. We have what we call a constitutional enclosure. Mm -hmm. We have what we call a paper enclosure. And we have what we call a monastic enclosure. Mm -hmm. But not to go far away, yeah. we leave what we call a paper enclosure mm -hmm. according to our constitutions. Mm -hmm. And in paper enclosure, we stay inside and the other people are like outside. Mm -hmm. Like now you can say you are outside, yeah. although we are together. together yeah. So why this barrier? Mm -hmm. The barrier is because of the paper enclosure, we live a life of silence. Mm -hmm. And our activities, we work in silence. And so, for us to be able to live that contemplation, that silence, 
we have what we call, they are not in barriers as such, mm -hmm. but it's just a kind of a secure place mm -hmm. for us to be able to continue with our mission. Okay. Yes. Okay. And why we are called in nuns is because of our way of monastic way of living. Mm -hmm. The nuns don't go out preaching, mm -hmm. don't go out teaching, don't go out social working, and so forth. They stay in a monastery, in an enclosure, just praying. Mm -hmm. And then people come to them to ask for different kinds of prayer, mm -hmm. come and they talk about their needs, mm -hmm. and they will lift those people to God. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Sister. Sister Kawira? <laughs> yeah, Lucia. Lucia, yeah. <laughs> please could you add more on that yes. about the, mm -hmm. the nun? For, I know most of the viewers, yeah. they are vast with the, the sisters, but as far as the nuns are concerned, mm -hmm. I think they know very little, I'm sure. Maybe if you have some more, anything more you have to add? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to add on to what sister have said, mm -hmm. nun, the real distinction is nun live in the monastery. Mm -hmm. And the sisters live in convent. Yeah. Mostly, you won't hear sisters living in monasteries mm -hmm. in the real sense, mm -hmm. official terminologies. Yeah. The separation, like what sisters have said, it is a kind of separation from the world. Mm -hmm. We are in the world, but not in the world. Mm -hmm. So, we are kind of in between. Mm -hmm. We have to be in the world because we have to know the needs of the world and then we lift them to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. So this separation is to help us more than maybe to people out there to define our life. Mm -hmm. Every time we feel tempted to behave, to go with the pace of the world, mm -hmm. we remember, no, we have already given our life like a holocaust, mm -hmm. fully burned for the good of the world. Okay. That's why we have this separation. Many Thank people you. make fun, they joke, like, yeah. you know, we can get wild and jump, but that's not the reason. Yeah. <laughs> it has a spiritual connotation to it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for trying to elaborate to our viewer and maybe to tell more is that uh, the sisters are active, the nuns are, are passive as far as uh, uh, missions are concerned. The nuns are contemplative. They are contemplative. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, um, when you, any con in any congregation, the founder has a charism. I am sure your founder too has a charism that you are carrying out since the 12th century until today. Maybe Sister Martin, what is the charism of the Dominican nuns of Corpus Christi <laughs> Monastery? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sister. Yeah. As you have said, for sure we have a charism. Yes. And as we started with our founder, mm -hmm. our founder was trying to give the truth to the people. Mm -hmm. So our charism is truth. And why is it the truth? If we look at the heart of every human person, even as we explained that these people believed there are two gods, mm. they were trying to go get who is this God, who is the true God. Mm -hmm. So in our charism, we try to give this truth to the world. Okay. And how we do this, our truth cannot be separated from our mission mm -hmm. because for us Dominicans, we believe that we need it to know mm -hmm. in order to love. Okay. While in different other charisms, like Franciscans, I know, yeah. they need it to love yeah. before they know. Yeah. So for us, we search for the truth, know the truth, and then we give the truth to the people through the preaching. Mm -hmm. And that's why St. Thomas came with a brilliant idea, contemplate. Mm -hmm and then give the people the fruits of your contemplation. Yeah. So that is our charism. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, sisters. I am also getting enlightened as the viewer is getting enlightened. Uh, I am sure because nobody becomes a nun or a sister from heaven and boom, you become a nun or a sister. You have a journey, a vocation journey before you made the decision 
after seeing so many other congregations, you chose to join the Dominican. Sister Lucia, what is your vocation journey? And first of all, from which parish are you from and which diocese? So that I'm sure the viewers will be happy to see their daughter in the studio. Thank you. Uh, I come from St. Francis of Assisi, Roiro Parish, mm -hmm. and it is a parish owned by Franciscans, captain. Mm -hmm. But then it was big, but after I joined the monastery, I think it was divided into four zones. Mm -hmm. By then it was very huge. Mm -hmm. My vocational journey started back in 2006, mm -hmm. that when I joined the aspirancy, and like anybody, any young people or most of the young people, I did not know anything about contemplative life when I was growing up. Okay. Only once I asked my grandma and she told me those things finished long ago. The only <laughs> thing which is remaining is active sisters, okay. contemplative nuns finished. Okay. But I went for a seminars. I went for a seminar in another congregation mm -hmm. and then I started the aspirancy mm -hmm. with them. Okay. When I was there, we came here one time to buy candles with the sister and we did not come out of the car. She just came in. I didn't see anybody. She rang the bell. I didn't see anybody. She went in, came back with the candles and I said, what have happened? I did not know what, I knew to buy something you have to go to supermarket, <laughs> but now you go somewhere, you just enter, you come in the car. don't see people who are saying. I didn't see anybody, <laughs> I didn't hear anything, <laughs> even I never had anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but sister had some pamphlet mm -hmm. for this community, and she just gave us for fun. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling my companions, hey, these people look so interesting, I would like just to go and see. Mm -hmm. The initiative God took to call me was through curiosity. Okay. I did ended up here through curiosity. I wanted to see exactly what went on mm -hmm. and what is there. And okay. are there did the people living there? Mm -hmm. So when I joined the aspirancy, I decided to stay. Oh. You know, aspirancy is more or less like come and see. Come and see, okay. Yeah, after that I can decide, okay, when I go home I have seen enough. Mm -hmm. Or I say I still want to see more. Mm -hmm. 2007, I did my postulancy. After that, I did my novitiate two years. Mm -hmm. And I made first profession 2010, mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. Then I continued with my formation and I made my solemn vows 2014. Okay. Since then, I'm still discerning the will of God, not sure. like discerning if I'm marrying or yeah. not, or just discerning how can I serve God better in the call He has called me. Thank you very much, sister. We are going to for a break, and when we come back, we shall continue because the story is getting interested, and I'm sure, dear viewer, you are also interested to know more about the Dominican nuns of the Corpus Christi Monastery. Do not go away. This is Missions of Hope at Dominican Nun Monastery at Karen. Keep watching. Capuchin TV, huduma katoliki ya uinjilishaji. Christianity, in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and prophets. Islam. No one of you truly believes until you wish for others what you wish for yourself. Judaism. What is hateful to you do not do to your neighbor. This is the whole Torah. All the rest is commentary. Baha'i Faith. Lay not on any soul a load that you would not wish to be laid upon you and desire not for anyone the things you would not desire for yourself. Buddhism, treat not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. Hinduism, this is the sum of duty. Do not do to others what would cause pain if done to you.
Kapuchin TV, your Catholic broadcasting ministry. Welcome back, dear viewer, and as I said before, in the studio we have the Dominican nuns, Sister Martin and Sister Lucia, and they are telling us about the monastery life. I am sure you are also interested to know more. Join, continue listening to this conversation as we learn more about the Dominican. Sister Lucia has given us her, her vocation journey. But sister, before we move out from you, you see, uh, when people are joining religious life, parents are not very comfortable to let their children uh, join religious life. Especially for us, we had problems joining active life. What about you, <laughs> contemplative life? <laughs> what was that challenge that you went through? when you are trying to inform your parents the kind of life that you are choosing? Yeah, it's normal, it's mm -hmm. natural, but I think mine was worse, if not the worst, mm -hmm. because I'm the only child, oh. and my mother is not married. Okay. So in my nuclear family, we're only two. So if I'm not there, my mother is just left alone. And even now, she just lived by herself. Mm -hmm. It was extremely difficult for my mom. She did not see how could that happen. First, she felt God was unfair. Yeah. If really God is the one who calls, he gave her only one child, and then now he he's taking her, her back. It was like, <laughs> and my, my mom was really hurt, yeah. very angry, with, even with God. Mm. But my grandmother intervened. It was a big story, yeah, yeah. so I'm just going to cut it short. My mm -hmm. grandmother intervened and he said, she's just a child. By then I was 19. Mm -hmm. And my, my grandmother said, she's just a child. Allow her to go, she'll come back. If you want to pray for somebody, she'll go and pray, and then she'll receive, and then she'll come back. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother really pleaded with my mom, and my mom said, okay, let her go. But it was with the hope she would definitely come back. And you have never come back. After eight years, every back. time my mom <laughs> came and told me, are you still going to stay? Mm -hmm. And the first time when she came to visit me, she saw the kind of life I'm inside, she can't hug me. She, I mean, she felt like, no, this is misery. And mm -hmm. she was saying, this is prison and worse than prison. Mm -hmm. But I told her, mom, I'm very free and very happy. Continuing to assure her I'm happy and I'm free, it was giving her a little bit of courage. Mm -hmm. Although she knew one day I'll go back. Mm -hmm. After eight years, when I, now I told her, mom, I have decided to make my solemn commitment. She came, I called her, but when I told her, she said, Lucia, no, let me come, then we talk about it. Mm -hmm. When she came, she just asked me, are you sure that you mean it? Mm -hmm. I told her, mom, I mean it. So she gave me her blessing. That was the first time oh. she gave me her blessing. And right now, I'm happy because ball, ball can change. Now my mom is very comfortable with my calling. Mm -hmm. I have been sent. We are not being sent. We are not missionaries per mm -hmm. se. Mm -hmm. But I have gone out of the country to serve, to help other monasteries, mm -hmm. and my mom is at peace. I just call and tell mom, I'm going. Okay. I say, okay, and when are you going to be back? I say, I don't know. You know, it's indefinite most of the time. Yeah. And she is at peace, and she supports me a lot with the prayers and encouragement. Now we she thank is at God peace. for your mom for accepting. It's not easy, I can agree. Mm -hmm. We are 12 in my family, but my father was feeling hard mm. to let one go. So <laughs> if she had one yeah. and she accepted her to go serve the Lord, I think that's a great sacrifice. Mm. Sister Martina, what is your st Martin, what is your story? <laughs> yeah, my story is, I think it's a good story. Yeah. And I love telling it because we say every sin has a story to tell. Sure. So my life started back in 1993, 1994 mm -hmm. there, when by me and my sisters were moving around with the other girls looking for 
For my sister wanted to become a sister, me, I wasn't just following them. She is older than me. Mm -hmm. I was following them just to, for the curiosity's sake. Mm -hmm. And then one, one day I remember my sister told my father that they were going to visit some sisters somewhere. Mm -hmm. The sisters we had seen in our parish were Nazareth sisters. By the way, I come from Meru, okay. Mudambi Parish by then, but now we are in Munga Parish. Mm -hmm. So my sister said, told my father, I, we, were going, we are going to visit some sisters around. And my father is a very mean man, or, or was, may he rest in peace. And then we could not get a single shilling from our father. Mm -hmm. So that time we decided to give my sister one shilling to go buying his sweets. That was 19? That was 1993. Yeah, one shilling was big. <laughs> yes, that one shilling was big. You could, you could buy a, a sweet a for 10 cents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, you mean if you want to, want to be a sister can be given a coin. Mm -hmm. So I said, now even me, I want to be a sister. Oh. So anyway, we continued with the journey. But up to today, I've never gotten a shilling from my father. My sister who needed to become a sister did not become a sister, but I replaced her. Okay. And in my vocation to the contemplative life is a mystery to me because all what I needed is to become a sister. I didn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. then the difference between contemplatives and the yes. active. Yeah. Or what I needed is to become a sister. And the one time a sister happened, a nun from here happened to come home in our village, and I saw them dressing. I saw it was very interesting mm -hmm. with the rosaries, mm -hmm. scapulars, black and white, that shining white. And I said, This habit is good. Mm -hmm. The first desire was the shilling, now the habit is enrolling me to the life. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to sister, and then she invited me to come and see. When I came, I, I, I think I was like so innocent, I didn't even realize the division. I had gone to visit the other sisters, they have sofa sets around, you sit together, you eat together. But when I came here, there was this division as we had talked about it before. Mm. And then the food will be brought and I will be left alone. And the sister disappears. She will come to pick the dishes. So anyway, all the same, I was curious. I said, I want to see inside. What is there inside? <laughs> yeah. So we continued with the vocation directress. She was sharing with me, giving me books to read. But it never dawned to me that there is a difference between the two lives. Mm. So at one point, I told them, okay, they told me, if you want to come in, you can write an application to come in, even before I go back home. So I wrote an application, and I said, I want to come in. But all of a sudden, I changed my mind so fast, because I was told, once you come in, you have come in, yeah. no going out. <laughs> so, <laughs> like in the Bible, I said, no, let me go and say goodbye. <laughs> To my people, I will come back. Okay. And sure enough, anyway, I went home. I said in goodbye to everybody. And I told them, you will either come to bury me or I don't know. Anyway, it went on like that. I came back to the monastery. I continued with the formation. That was 1994, 1995. I started my novitiate 1995, around the August there. And then... After my novitiate, I made my first profession, 97. And in 2000, I made my final profession. Mm -hmm. And I am here up to date. And I have never regretted. I came to realize the difference of the life I'm living and the life out there during my novitiate. Okay. Yes. And I'm happy about it up to date. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Sister Martin. That's yes. a quite a, a long time. and. Uh, Oh, you see, people would wonder, how do you stay in one place for that quite a long time? Outside there, you could move, go to visit your show, go to visit your aunties. Yani, you are used to that movement. And how was it easy for you to adapt to that life? And another, my question now, 
for you to be a contemplative, should you be an, a silent person? Like oh. me, I am a very noisy person. Can I feed? <laughs> not, not for bad. When we are supposed to keep quiet, I keep quiet. But yes. I like to talk like that. Can I fit in contemplative life? Yes, you can fit very well. Thank you. And why I am encouraging you that you can fit very well, mm -hmm. contemplative life is not for introverts. Oh, okay. And I am not saying introverts in a wrong kind of sense mm. because introverts are believed to be people who are quiet, yeah. within drone. Yeah. That would mean that since I, I am a person who is within drone, mm -hmm. I can stay in a monastery, mm -hmm. not at all. Okay. You are robust. Oh. Yes, because <laughs> in the monasteries we am by, that silence comes to reality. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are not able to to cope with it anymore mm -hmm. if you are an introvert. Oh. Yes, and it's where you come to realize or to get to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Then, why don't I find it very hard? Me, I was uh, physically an extrovert mm -hmm. or a very talkative person. Mm -hmm. So like me. Yes, <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> my mother or my father or my siblings were wondering will this one make it? Mm -hmm. As I say, I came, I didn't know we are supposed to live in a life of silence. Me, I was doing things myself, and I will be told, Sister Kawira, keep quiet. You are, you are making a lot of noise. And then our mistress, I remember in our doors, she kept, she kept on writing silence, silence, silence. Mm -hmm. And that time, I remember I was a postulant, I couldn't understand what is this silence. So at one point I decided to keep quiet. Not understanding why I'm keeping quiet, but I'm told to keep quiet, quiet mm -hmm. to observe silence. Mm -hmm. So I became black, fat, and so forth. I changed, my personality changed mm -hmm. because I did not understand all about the silence. Mm -hmm. When I go like cleaning, I will move things make a lot of noise moving things, see I'm silent. Mm, yes, but what is going around is making a lot of noise. Yeah. But when during my novitiate, now I started new formation of being explained our way of life, mm -hmm. regular observances, why this, why that, why that, I became so engrossed in silence that I don't even remember. And they all are uh, one day I really get in why I should keep silence. Mm -hmm. I long for it. Wow. Because of the essence of contemplation, mm -hmm. which is expressed from deep silence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as I said, this is where I came to find myself. And even today I define it that a Dominican nun or a nun is a person who comes to the realization and it continues to grow in that realization mm -hmm. that the secrets of life is in the contemplation of divine realities. Mm -hmm. With this, I'm able to kind of move on myself and be able to keep that silence. Mm -hmm. Before I was talking, even when I was a postulant, sisters here were calling me Kasuku. <laughs> yes, because of talking. <laughs> And also I could laugh, smile, because now I was feeling it's too deep. Mm. She is one of the sisters who make a joke, you are smiling even to the air. <laughs> I said, oh, that is good. Well, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, sisters. You are, your story is very interesting. I am finding myself engrossed to, to wanting to ask as many questions as possible uh, for the sake of the viewer and those who have never come into contact with the nuns and even as I listen to you, I pray that God, whatever you found here, may he bring it to fulfillment and to final perseverance. So we are still going on with this conversation. We go for our a break. And when we come back, they are going to tell us what do they do inside this monastery. Keep watching Missions of Hope with I, Sister Esther Muturi.
Kapuchin TV kitambulisho katoliki Synod of prayer We stand before you Holy Spirit as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us make yourself at home in our hearts teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it we are weak and sinful do not let us promote disorder do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor partially influence our actions let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right we ask these of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the father and the son forever and ever amen capuchin tv your catholic broadcasting ministry Welcome back, dear viewer, to our last segment of our uh, program, Missions of Hope. And as I said before, in the studio we have Sister Martin and Sister Lucia, the nuns belonging to the Dominican nuns of Corpus Christi, here at the monastery at Karen. Sister Lucia, like myself, I am sure our viewer is asking, what goes on uh, when you wake up? Or what is the program of the Dominican nuns now that most of your time you are inside contemplative? Maybe you could take us through what happens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Many people wonder. Like yeah. when I came, my mom always told me, your work is just to sit down and eat and pray. Yeah. And I said, thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. I pray that that was all there is, but mm -hmm. there is more than that. Mm -hmm. Our main apostolate is prayer, mm -hmm. so we have seven canonical hours every seven. day. Yeah, seven can canonical hours, mm -hmm. besides mass, personal adoration, and lecture divina. Mm -hmm. So we normally wake at 10 to 5 every day except Sunday. Sunday we wake one hour later, so okay. 10 to 6. Mm. So normal day we wake 10 to 5. We have the first office, which is Office of the Reading, or Martins, at 6.20. It takes maybe 40 minutes mm -hmm. or so. We go back to our rooms or to the oratory or wherever anybody wants to be mm -hmm. for what we call Lecture Divina, meditating with the Word of God, mostly for the readings of the day, mm -hmm. which goes for one hour. After that, the bell rings, and we go back to the chapel for morning prayers or lords. That is 10 to 7. And immediately after, after morning prayers, we have mass at 7.30. Our Dominican friars come every day mm -hmm. to break the bread and the word with us and for us. Mm -hmm. Then we break for breakfast, and we start our work. I will say what kind of work we do. But we normally go back to the chapel at a quarter after nine for what we call TAS, or a mid-morning prayer. The adorations continue, work continues, and we go back to the chapel at five to twelve, where we have midday at the rosary. Then we break for, for lunch, what we call profound, People might prefer to call it siesta, but mm -hmm. it, for us it not, it's not siesta because it's time of midday mental con, men, examination of conscience. Okay. So there is a whole hour for that. Mm -hmm. I can examine within, within 15 minutes, the rest I rest or I do something else. Mm -hmm. So at 3, we go back for noon or mid-afternoon prayer. And it Friday, we added the prayer, the seven psalms, praying for the souls of the faithful departed. Then we go back to our rooms or to finish up with work within a few minutes. Quarter past four, we go for study. Dominicans are known for books. Mm -hmm. So from quarter past four, we go to for study, personal study, mm -hmm. until 10 to 6, when we go for evening prayer or vespers after which we go for supper at 
recreation that when we talk mm -hmm. for one hour from half past seven to half past eight then we have compline mm -hmm. by nine we are all in our rooms mm -hmm. but each sleep when she feel like okay yeah thank you thank you so much sister lucia for taking us through the program mm -hmm. sister martin um I am sure, as Sister said, there is some work that you do inside here. Maybe in a nutshell, could you tell us what is that that keeps you busy so that people at home may not be saying your work is just to sit <laughs> and to pray? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you have asked a very good question. What is that that keeps us busy? Yeah. The main thing which keeps us busy is prayer. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are here. That is our work. Mm -hmm. That is what we do as sisters elaborated very well. Yeah. But the question here is, since we are contemplatives, mm -hmm. we don't engage in activities out there like teaching that yeah. we don't get some salary at the end of the month, mm -hmm. or we are expecting something like that. Mm -hmm. So how do we live? Really? How do we survive? Yeah, how do we survive? Yeah. How do we sustain ourselves? So Dominican nuns are known I would say the whole country for making candles. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have people who come to buy our candles because that is where we get our source of living. Mm -hmm. We make candles. We have different departments of candles. Mm -hmm. We have what we call Pasco candles, the big candles used in during Easter. We are the soap providers. Mm -hmm. We have what we call Litangico candles what people come and buy new, they use during mass and so forth. And we have these other kinds of candles, different kinds of candles. Mm -hmm. So that is what we do for our sustenance. Okay. We also make church vestments, chasubles, cassocks, harps, water clothes, all those we do. Mm -hmm. Then we have a retreat house, which we don't learn it ourselves because that is not our way of life. Mm -hmm. But we have people learning our retreat house where people come for time of prayer, silence, meetings, conferences, and so forth. So we get also something, uh, something from there. Then we have livestock, we have cows, mm -hmm. we have chickens, but very few. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a garden oh. where we plant some vegetables, mm -hmm. we have bananas, we plant maize, but in God is so good because in our garden, we feed so many people, oh. they come knocking at our doors and what we can give is what we have, mm -hmm. so we give them what, we, what is from the garden and we don't lack, but also we feed so many monkeys, so... <laughs> <laughs> When yeah. you plant things like maize, they come and feast. They can they know when it is ready before us. Oh. Yes, if it's carrots, they know how to dig. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the things we do mm -hmm. in our way to sustain ourselves. Thank you so much, Sister. Yes. Sister Lucia, most of the people I interview here in the Missions of Hope, when I ask them in which way are you offering hope to the society as a congregation they have different ways of explaining for example dealing with the poor dealing with the handicapped dealing with the people with hiv in your own lifestyle what can you say is your mission of hope as far as our program is concerned yeah thank you that's a good question yeah. it will give the whole definition or identity mm -hmm. of who we are and our contribution for the well-being yeah. of the human nature mm -hmm. uh, we preach through prayer mm -hmm. that is the way we offer hope to the world the world full of hopelessness mm -hmm. and desperate cases mm -hmm. we just preach through prayers and one of the things just to refer to my story is I wanted it to contribute to the world when I was growing up. Yeah. I thought of becoming a doctor and I saw that is very noble because I'll treat many people and heal many people. Then I thought, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. What about people in the court? Mm -hmm. They need the help. So maybe I can make a good lawyer. Mm -hmm. then I, but you know, only that, you know, everything was lacking. Mm -hmm. If I do this, then I lack another thing. But when I chose to be a nun, a Dominican nun, and it was explained to me what our mission is, our contribution to the world, 
I felt it catches everything. Mm -hmm. Because when you are just seated here, we can know there is war in Ukraine. I don't have to be there to treat, mm -hmm. but I can pray for God's presence to bring peace, which, you know, sometimes when God is working, he works slowly, mm -hmm. but he always works surely. Mm -hmm. So our mission of hope, supporting you, mm -hmm. or of supporting Jesus' mission, it is praying for the whole world. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sister. Sister Martin, you have anything to add on that? Yeah, I think I can just add and say that Sister has explained it very, very well. Mm -hmm. And our presence as Dominican nuns, or as nuns per se in the world, we offer tremendous hope for the future and glory we are waiting for. Mm -hmm. Because people have asked, as you have asked, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. What is your contribution? Mm -hmm. And I would say, as Sister has said, just in being at the foot of the cross, like Mary, lifting the world to God, that gives the world tremendous hope. Sure. And they know that, yes, even those nuns can live that kind of life, which people find it very hard to live that kind of life. Mm -hmm. And they are there and day in, day out, and you see them happy, mm -hmm joyful, like they don't lack, like they don't have challenges, mm -hmm. then for sure there is a hope. Sure. Yes. Which they are directing us. As nuns, we are directing people to that tremendous hope. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. There is a girl outside there who is watching this program and maybe she has been touched by what uh, you have said. And she would wish to join the Dominican nuns. What are the qualifications in terms of a Kenyan? Which KCSC mean grade do you take? Yeah, the qualification first and foremost is the fact that someone is called. Mm -hmm. If you can be able to demonstrate that by the fact that you are being called, good enough. But for the sake of humanness, mm -hmm. We take the minimum of C mm -hmm. play, or if someone did not get that, if you had a D or something, then you need a course. A course. Not because we need the course for anything, mm -hmm. but it helps you to mature mm -hmm. and to, to help the brain to reach average way of making decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know, there is one girl who has been following me. She stated that she had a D and. Um, she did certificate and she's improving to diploma. If, like for example, can you take such a person who has already a course, even if she didn't get a C, she got a D and not D plus D, but she has a certificate and then she has improved on to, towards diploma. Mr. Martin, is she accepted? In the yes, okay. I would say the person is acceptable, yeah. but the question is, does she have vocation to contemplative All life? Right. That's key. Because mm. she might not be accepted in the active life mm -hmm. because of ingrained. Yeah. But then, now she feels that she would like to go to the Dominicans mm -hmm. because the Dominicans can accept here with D, D yeah. but she may not be having the vocation to yeah. the Dominicans mm -hmm. or to the contemplative life. Mm -hmm. So that is the distinguishing mm -hmm. feature. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sisters. I wish <laughs> there was more time. We could continue and continue and continue. So if somebody wishes to get in touch with you how do they get in touch with you do you have social media platforms or i'm sure by the fact that you know what is happening in the world there is some way that you get to know what is happening outside in the outside world so do you have contacts or how can someone get you Lucia? yeah we do mm -hmm. we have the con we have phone and Maybe I can just say the number. Yeah, just say the number is, slowly. So that yeah. Zero seven two two four two eight two five six. Please repeat. Zero seven two two four two eight two five six. 
or we have email you some people apply through email these days you mm, never yeah. get letter from post office yeah and our email address is dom nuns d o m n u n s at yahoo.com so it is like dominican but dom nuns okay Thank you very much. Sister Martin, closing remark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the, the program is coming to the end. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you very much, Sister Esther and the viewer for coming to us. We are very grateful that people really wonder who are nuns, but I think now we have gone to another level. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping, and we continue to hope, since you give hope, yeah. your, <laughs> yes. your missions of hope, yeah. that from these conversations we have this morning, mm. it will be possible for more young me women to be able to interact uh, with us, to be able to know who are Dominican nuns, yeah. to be able to come to see if they can fit here yeah. or where God is calling them. Okay. So we are very happy for this. Mm. And to add on to how they can contact us, we, have our, we also have a website mm -hmm. where people can log in, see us, see what we do, and so many other activities. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister. Sister Lucia, closing remark? Uh, yeah. I am so grateful, Sister Esther, and the viewers for this opportunity. We normally don't appear in uh, social media. I know one time some, somebody asked me about Facebook, and I was like, what is that? How does it work? You know, we don't appear. <coughs> Honestly, <coughs> I think it is the first time to have this kind of an experience, and it is very encouraging. We are happy even to make ourselves known to the world. Many people don't know us. And just final remark to summarize our way of life is we are the contemplatives the heart of the church if a human heart is not functioning even if every part of the body is working the person is dead so if contemplatives are not vibrant deep in our monasteries in our cloister where nobody sees us nobody sees the heart the world will be more in mess than it is today so we promise the prayers to the whole world and we also ask you to pray for us. Thank, thank you, you so much, much, sister. I also take this opportunity to thank you for allowing us indulge into your privacy <laughs> and wanting to know more about the contemplative life. Missions of Hope is intention is to tell the story that maybe somebody else would not have told what the religious men and women are doing in their quest to serve God and to offer hope in the society. Please keep praying for us. We also pray for you that what God, that good thing that God started in you may bring it to fulfillment. Thank you so much, dear viewer. The Dominican Nun Corpus Christi Ministry shows the beauty of the Catholic Church. Their work is to pray for the church and the world at large. That has been Missions of Hope with our sister Esther Muturi at the Dominican Nun Corpus Christi Monastery. Until next Tuesday is bye for now. God bless you. Capuchin TV, your Catholic broadcasting ministry.